Hi, my dear friends of the monkey mind. Oh, my dear friends of the orderly chaos too. <laughs> so we carry on with spot on Feng Shui and we're also carrying on with the theme of funny hairstyles. That's just what it is. And I'm quite happy about it. So today's spot on Feng Shui is about how to Feng Shui your office desk. I mean, we all know the situation, don't we? We have the messy office desk. And um, do we like it? Do we not like it? Hmm. As I always say in the Feng Shui, there's no such thing as a good thing or a bad thing. It's just about timeliness. So sometimes um, a messy office desk is a sign of creativity. When you're in the middle of something, in the middle of a project or whatever, then the desk probably will be messy. But we also want the clarity. So if you're stuck or if you're starting something, then of course the clarity comes in. And here is how we can use the Feng Shui for that. Let me tell you a little bit about that. So I want to start with a bit of a wider picture before we come to the actual desk. So the wider picture, as I also already did in another video, I'm probably refer to that down here, um, is you need to sit on your desk in a commanding position. You are in control, which means you're sitting behind your desk and in front of you, you have control over the situation. You can see who's coming in. You can see the door. You have you, you are ruling the room. That is how you have to be. So nobody likes a door in the back. Ideally, you see the door and you can see also through the window who's coming and what's happening. So that is really important for you to have an undisturbed and successful office desk. You are in command. You are controlling the room. Okay. Just, just feel how even just saying that makes things more settling and more in control. Okay. Then number two, the solid position you're having should be accompanied by a solid desk. So if you have a solid desk, that helps a lot. I'm not a fan of glass desks. I always have the feeling like the idea is slipping away underneath and I can see through that. It's just kind of odd. So a solid desk is really the best to really have you to ground your work, to really ground your work. And the chair should of course support you so it's good if it has arm you can rest your arms if the back is high but whatever you have is fine and the most important thing is really the functionality the functionality so the chair should be easy to remove to get in and out if he has wheels or not wheels doesn't matter the wheels should work they shouldn't squeak and they shouldn't block that's the important thing it should be easy to remove the chair out and back in it shouldn't be blocked by anything because if it's blocked when you want to work and you have to fiddle around so you're not getting straight flowing into work so that is the thing supportive chair solid desk commanding the room to start with okay so that is one of the rules in your office and then we have the desk itself okay so the desk itself as i said sometimes it's timely to have chaos sometimes it's timely to have clarity and what I really want you to think about, if you start something new, then you really, really want to have a clean slate, to have a proper clean desk. So if you're starting something, clear your desk. Really make it visible and palpable that you are starting something new and not on top of other crap that's still there. Okay? So that's the one thing. If you're having chaos on your desk, ask yourself, are these things that you're having on your desk all necessary for this project you're working on right now? Are they necessary? If there is stuff that's not necessary, ask yourself, is it stuff that you need to get done or that you kind of try and hide away somewhere, that you're refusing to deal with, that you're procrastinating? Get clarity on these things. So if you have a stash on your table, on your desk, of things that you don't want to deal with, um, it's not making things better. If you are an entrepreneur, if you are um, working for someone, it's not good procrastinating these things because you, it will be in the back of your head as it is on your desk. So it will procrastinate the whole project, the whole theme, what you're doing at the moment. You can't have clutter on your work desk that is that needs to be done. That is a form of procrastination. You need to clear your head for that. 
definitely at the beginning of a project, but sometimes also in between. I know that some people say at the end of the week, you should have your desk cleared. So I know people who do that on Fridays, they're clearing the desk. So Monday morning, they're coming to a fresh table. That's really cool. And that's really nice. And I like that too. But if you're, of course, an entrepreneur or if you're working at home, then that's not always viable. I, for instance, love working on the weekends at times. So I don't have this Friday thing. But I have a thing that if in the evening I want to have stuff cleared so that I can start the morning at least with a proper list. So that's the thing that I do. Ask yourself, is everything you have on your desk really necessary for what I am doing now? And then, of course, you can clear the table and use it um, with the bagua. If you want to use the bagua on your desk, totally fine. I personally have to say I don't care about Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere. I care more about practicality. So I would have my plant on the left-hand side as it would be in the Northern Hemisphere bagua because that's where the wood element sits. But I would primarily have it sitting there because I'm right-handed. So it would disturb my, my area where I would have my work stuff. I also have stuff on the left-hand side because weirdly enough, I like to read stuff on the left-hand side. I don't know where that comes from, but that's just my practicality. But writing and everything and having stuff available is on the right side. Um, from the Feng Shui, you want to have your phone on the right side right bottom side. Again, I'm right-handed, but what the Feng Shui also says, the right-hand side is the helpful people. So if you need advice or if you want opportunity, it sits there on your right bottom side. And that's where I want it to be. Um, the top side, so the, 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 the space of your desk on the top of the desk behind your laptop, computer, whatever you have there, books, um, that is the fire area, the famous success area. So that is where you actually want to have your light, which is the fire. But you can also shed a light on the right top hand side. That would then encourage what is um, um, generally called the love corner, but it's also communication. It's the communication with others. So you would have that there and try shed a light on that. You can also have it on the bottom left side if you want it and infuse it. But again, um, really make it practical. Feng Shui just for the feng shui sense is, is not viable. It needs to be practical. So it needs to be practical for you. So ask yourself, why would you put this there and that there and that there? Does it make sense? Is it helping me to finish my project more efficiently? Then do it. If it's just because, oh, the feng shui says there needs to be a plant on this side or there needs to be a water bowl here, down here or whatever, and it's not practical. I mean, it's not practical having a fish bowl right in front of you in the career area of your desk, is it? So what's the use then? So oh, I really want to encourage you to use the feng shui as a guideline, but not just for the sake of it. It has to make sense. So I would rather go for clarity versus creativity, metal versus wood, and my um, way to create a desk and have an area for all those things, but not play it by the letter. That's what the Feng Shui Bagua says, but keep it practical. That's my most important advice for you. But <clears throat> I love starting a new project on a clear slate, on a clear desk. And I love from time to time when I have my chaos here, saying, taking a moment and saying, that's too much chaos. I can't be creative in that chaos. Taking the stuff, taking all my, say, okay, is this really necessary now or is it for tomorrow or what is it? So the Feng Shui of your desk, you can use the Bagua if it helps you. Beautiful, it can create clarity but it needs to be practical and it needs to be efficient. And this is how I use the Feng Shui on my desk. Timely, not always the same, whatever is present in this moment. And that is what Feng Shui should be about. Not playing it by the letter, not playing it 100% by the ear, but somewhere in the middle 
the yin and the yang, the chaos and the clarity. Create it so that it works for you. Because if it doesn't work for you, it's not good feng shui. In the end, it's all about what works for you. Wonderful. Have a lovely day. And I'll see you again soon here on Spot On Feng Shui with Sandra. Bye.